Hey everybody and welcome back to Super Comic Fun Time. This is From the Pile, Episode 7. 7. 7. And you'll remember, uh, if you watched my breakout episode, we got some pretty interesting specimens from the Comics Cube. And one of them that I specifically saw and was intrigued by was called The Living End. The single greatest comic book ever. Issue one, only three dollars. Nature's cruelest hoax from Deadfish Comics. And it promises down here, this comic will blow your mind. Well, will it? Now, just let's just take in this cover art for a second because I do really like this cover art. Um, I don't think I saw half of it when I when, when I when I looked at it in uh, the breakout episode and I, I do remember pointing this out if I'm dead then why am I still alive also starring a turtle so you can tell this is going to be a humorous book just from the cover and I you know then here you've got this kind of death skull behind here I didn't really notice this part and then you see like uh, I mean this cover is a great cover I love it I love it Okay, so we go inside and we have the living end. And so um, essentially what happens is this guy is driving. There's a turtle in the road. And, you know, I kind of wonder, um, I never read Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I remember I had been in the army. Uh, I'd been overseas in Germany in the 80s. And when I came back, suddenly there was this thing called uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and I was like I was befuddled by it because I thought huh that didn't exist before and anyway you know it, 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 it is like this thing I don't know if you if you're ever overseas for a certain amount of time or even if you're ever or away from home for a while you know a few months things change so fast you normally don't notice them when you're there because you're acclimated to it and so when I came back, there was all kinds of different things happening. One is gas had been, I don't know, close to $2. And then I came back for Christmas one year and it was like 77 cents a gallon. That was pretty awesome. But it just seemed like I'd come back to a different country. Um, this, this would have been around 86, 87. It's hard to remember. I know I spent a lot of time in Germany without taking leave. And then I came back for a whole month uh, after I'd accumulated a lot of leave. Anyways, I'm getting off track again. So um, this guy sees a turtle in the middle of the road and he swerves to avoid it. And then he ends up seriously injured. And then the turtle, uh, it turns out the turtle isn't a turtle after all. He can talk. You know, I'm glad I paid for that cell phone now. So like, you know, he's sitting here dying and like he's thinking, oh, it's great that I paid for this cell phone. I can call for help. And then this turtle comes and says, you know, uh, uh, you know, I've been searching for somebody to give these powers to. And when you acted so selflessly just then to save a turtle, I think I'll give them to you. And he starts explaining his backstory and, you know, I was once one of Earth's most powerful heroes. When an arch rival of mine transformed me into this form, I thought my days of bravery and good deed doing were over. I began searching the globe for a person magnificent enough to take my powers and continue fighting for justice. You, Greg Yeoman, may be that man. How do I know your name? I know many things, Greg no Yeoman. Unlike you, I can see past small terrapin forms far beyond my body, to the future, to the past, to the stars and beyond. I can see your thirst for adventure, your reckless driving for bettering, your reckless drive for bettering others, and your need to find a new calling in life. Well, he's dying. So what happens is the guy dies, but then the turtle has the power to call him back. And the turtle decides to give him these powers and I like this this is like very uh, kind of mythical you know uh, Stephen King wrote see the turtle of enormous girth upon his back he holds the earth 
uh, the, the turtle is a very important creation mythos type uh, uh, entity or archetype. So yeah, so you see he's sticking out his tongue here. It's like the turtle tells him to lick his shell and then um, he'll be transformed into this new superhero called the living end. But what happens is like the turtle is like thinking, okay, I'll give this guy powers and you know, he'll be so grateful he'll turn me into something, you know, he'll turn me back to my original form and not a turtle, but he's not having it. He's kind of pissed that the turtle's dead because, okay, with these powers, he's not fully resurrected. He can be the superhero at night, but as soon as the cock crows, which is to say as soon as dawn comes, he turns back into uh, a corpse. He's dead. So his only life is at night. And so he's kind of pissed about this. He goes like, Arriva dirt, you jerk. He goes, wait, there's more. And he's like, apparently there are things that the turtle could warn him about. But, you know, I kind of wonder if the turtle would have been injured if the car had run over him. I, I doubt it. So, you know, now that he's got this, um, these superpowers, he's going to try to um, get laid, have sex with a woman. Yeah. Okay. And then... Um, Oh yeah, and the book is also divided into chapters. So then we go into chapter two, the challenge of the turnips. And so, okay, before we go into that part, let's look at these ads. These are parody ads of things we used to see in like the 70s in our comic books. It's like, only you can prevent forest fires. You and the FBI. So for whatever reason, they have a owl. <coughs> you know, there was like a woodsy owl who was he was like give a hoot don't pollute and then there was Smokey the bear who was the forest fire thing and they kind of combine it here with the FBI it's it's dumb it's dumb but it's you know mildly amusing for a few seconds and then you can get a monster ghost and the ghost will try to kill you it's like a real ghost and it actually glows in the dark and then like here's like they used to have these I never paid too much attention to them I was I was a little bit into coin collecting when I was a kid but you would see these ads in comic books in the TV guide. Can you spot the difference between these two coins? And it's like, one is like just worth 25 cents and one is worth, this. here it says $45 million. Now, I think that's probably an exaggeration, but it might not be. And like, it's uh, to sell a book on how to identify coins or something like that. So yeah, these are kind of dumb ads. And here like hermit crabs were a fad in the late 70s. And here they have horseshoe crabs. And, you know, uh, it is what it is. It's like, if you remember this, it's probably funny. If you were born after, I don't know, say 1991, it might be confusing to you. So anyways, let me get into the second part of the story. And these bad guys are robbing a turnip truck for, truck for no reason. I don't know why. Um, I thought the first part, the first chapter was really, really good. Let's see here. It probably tells us what it was called. That's the full name. I know there was like a chapter heading, but uh, I don't see it here. At any rate, so then, you know, this is chapter two, and he's like got his superpowers, and these guys are going to, like this guy, hey, mister, get out of your truck. Why is that, son? I'm going to try to turn it into a chicken. Yeah, because he's got these powers, He's got, and he just wants to experiment with them. So he wants to try to turn the turnip truck into a chicken, which coincidentally, these guys are wanting to rob the turnip truck. So uh, in this universe, turnips must be valuable or something. Um, we have been, uh, that joke, uh, we've been planning this heist for months. Let's teach him not to muscle in on our turnips. Get him, boys. And so like these guys come and like what he ends up doing is he ends up, first he turns their heads into turnips, but that doesn't really stop them because they can still use their arms and stuff. And then he decides to turn them into full turnips and they're just sitting turnips in one of their shoes and then like some woman sees him and uh and she's kind of turned on because it's a superhero and let's see and who dear reader this mysterious female figure outlined in the alley light what dark secret does she hold where does she come from where is she going what new challenges does she have in store for our hero so you can see this is really kind of an over over the top book. It's a parody. Um, let's see, first you gave him a taste, 
than of their own medicine, i.e. the turnips. Then you momentarily transform them into objects of base subjugation. People put their feet inside shoes, you know. And so, like, that's her way of flirting with him. So then we, uh, you know, they decide to, like, hang out, go to her place, I guess. Because I don't think he has a place anymore because he's dead. So, part three, Yonder My Enemy. This is where we find out what happens to the turtle. And he ends up um, landing in France. And, you know, that happens in um, in the King Arthur mythos is a guy. It also happens in Parsifal is a guy in uh, France. I guess it's King Arthur. I can't really remember. He's like um, on his horse. He's in France. And then suddenly the horse takes three steps or something and he's in Scotland. And in Parsifal, there's this uh, very famous line. It's like we uh, travel little, but we go far. And um, the priest says to Parsifal, well, you see, my son, here, um, time turns into space. So, uh, so yeah, you had, like, fourth-dimensional physics there in, like, you know, when was uh, Parsifal written? The mid-1800s, I don't know, but it was before uh, fourth-dimensional physics were a thing, I'm pretty sure. Definitely before Einstein. So then, like, he lands, and it's like, I ache like never before. And then we get, stow it, slave. And so, like, this turtle, it, like, he just happens to accidentally land, and there's this cave here, and there's a monster in the cave, and we don't know what it is, but he's claiming that um, he now owns the turtle. He goes, no one commands me. Step into the light where I can see. You would like that, wouldn't you, slave? No, I strike from the shadows until I get my laundry back. No one sees me in this weakened state. And weekend is spelled like the weekend. And then like here there's like a bunch of uh, editor's notes. One says, we're pretty sure he meant weekend, like week, W-E-A-K. And then like the writer says, don't tell me what I meant. And so you got all this kind of uh, interplay going on with the reader because, you know, we're all comic book nerds, so we're all familiar with these conventions. So anyways... Um, Let's see what's going on here. Uh, at least tell me who you are in time. For now, know that I am your ruler. The rest is for me to know and for you to find out. Ha ha. The turtle's like, fine, be that way. And, uh, and yeah, that's where we leave the turtle. And then here we go. Part five, when titans tussle in bed. So anyways, um... Uh, what's his name, the living end, he uh, decides to make a pizza with his new powers. So then they um, sit down to eat the pizza, and then they decide to go to bed together. Um, let's see what's going on. What, what a question. Okay, let's see. Uh, if you could be anywhere... Oh, yeah, they're playing a board game after eating the pizza. What is the game called? I forget. Koala Quizzles. So it's a quiz game. It's like, if you could be anywhere right now, where would you be? Satisfactory answers moves three spaces. So she's like, how about it, Mr. Yeoman? What a question. In the past 24 hours, I've been fired from my job, been kicked out of my apartment, had all my possessions blown up when my car exploded, and on top of it all, I'm dead. What a bombshell. His things were in that car? That's news to us, who dang it. I've been, but I have no more strings, no more pressure. I have phenomenal superpowers and a beautiful woman who finds me exciting. Where would I like to be right now? Here, is that a satisfactory answer? Schmaltzy, but acceptable. Then I get to move ahead three spaces. I think you can move... Uh, you can move forward more than that. And so then they start kissing and then they, uh, they, they go to bed together. And then morning comes and he's a corpse. Ah! And, you know, that would be a nice place to end it. But, you know, here we have kind of a fake letters page or something. We have a rant by Unkadiev. I, I didn't bother to read it. It's like the type is really small. Then I guess we have a few more ads. Scurvy pirates. Robots are cool. And uh, then we have this part that was called uh, 
no, it cannot end yet. And then we just get these kind of non sequitur endings. And so, like, we have Neptune here who might have something to do with the turtle. I don't remember. Then we have a fake letters page, and I didn't read that. And then we have another bonus deleted page. And so, like, we have this guy coming in on a dinosaur. And all in all, you know, it was pretty dumb. It was it was okay. I think I think what you need is like um, one character you can identify with. Like everybody else can be stupid, but you need somebody. And there's like no ride along character really. Everything is just kind of, kind of out there. And you know, my favorite movie is um, Bringing Up Baby with. Um, Oh, of course, now I have the, uh, the, the Cary, 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 Cary Grant and um, uh, Catherine Hepburn. And that's one of my favorite movies, but it bombed when it was released. And people say it's because it's too wacky. And, you know, maybe it's because it's like it was made 100 years ago or whatever. But I, I just find that movie to be just delightfully mad. Uh, but there's still like kind, a kind of certain seriousness um, over it and here there's just uh, nothing I think for the reader to kind of grasp on I don't know if they continued making this I should probably look that up I would give it another chance I enjoyed it enough but it was just okay it wasn't like oh this great find from the comics cube it was just um, it was a it was a fun story a diversion uh, a lot you know some groaners it it had some fun stuff i think you know maybe they would just end it on the uh, page when he wakes up dead i mean you know it's going there you know it's going to happen so that would have just been great and then like what happens in the next issue but maybe this was only a one-off too i don't know anything about dead fish comics i still really like this cover art so you know anyways that was that was that find from the comics cube and um and you know i enjoyed it. it 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 wasn't it wasn't a treasure but it was it was fun enough and i could see like you know after a few issues of just being over the top they i mean they they could do something with this character i think they could make him uh they, they could still like have it be absurd and you know and whatnot, but just dial it back a little bit on the comic book conventions. That's what I would say. Anyways, if you enjoyed this show, uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, be sure to subscribe, share this video with your friends, and we will see you next time for From the Pile. Be well.